The, it's the great green con mm -hmm. because there we don't have the infrastructure for electric cars. We don't. We saw what happened in Texas. We saw, but here's the thing. Yeah. This plant, let's just, since they want to do science, and this is a beautiful thing about science, you can stretch and play, but facts are facts. There's mm -hmm. been five mass extinctions on this planet. Yeah. Four of those five, the sun gets blocked out, whether it's by a volcano, an asteroid, mm -hmm. gas from the ocean, or extreme cold. The sun gets blocked out. So if it happens again, according mm -hmm. to man-made, we're going right. to cause the same thing to happen again, right? Mm -hmm. So there'll be no sun. So the solar's not going to work. And the electricity's not going to work. So what are we going to have to live on when we figure it out? Gas and coal. In an era where woke culture permeates every aspect of American society, Tyrus, a Fox News contributor, stands as a vocal critic, challenging what he sees as misguided idealism and hypocrisy. His unfiltered commentary on issues ranging from environmental policies to social justice movements offers a stark counterpoint to prevailing progressive narratives. Tyrus's critique begins with what he perceives as the flawed logic behind current environmental policies. He argues that the push for electric vehicles and renewable energy sources fails to consider the realities of our planet's history and potential future challenges. This skepticism extends to other areas of societal change, including the entertainment industry. Tyrus's commentary on Hollywood reflects a broader concern about the impact of woke culture on creativity and free expression. He laments the loss of edgy, R-rated comedies that once defined American humor. No, the woke got in charge. Mm -hmm. You can't make R-rated movies because you might insult somebody, which is the whole point. Everyone should be insulted and laughing at themselves. So. Just, you know, but for him to say that, it's like, but you have the money, the, the ability, you could still make those movies. So you really can't push them. He made what he made two amazing movies in yeah. the past couple of years. Dragged across concrete. Oh yeah, he's doing great stuff on his but he Brawl in Cell Block 99. Give us, give us another one of those cool, give us Wedding Crashers too. Give us some fun stuff, you know? But because everyone's afraid of the, of the woke and the cancellation thing, but I think that's ending because all, all the movies during that era, nobody watches. This fear of offense, Tyrus argues, has led to a sanitization of content that strips away the very essence of comedy and provocative storytelling. But his criticism doesn't stop at the entertainment industry. Education, particularly higher education, is another arena where Tyrus sees woke culture causing harm. The debate over affirmative action in college admissions provides another flashpoint for Tyrus's criticism. Responding to backlash against a Supreme Court ruling on the matter, he doesn't mince words. Uh, this is this is the left 101. When it doesn't go my way, it's racist, and any any black man or woman involved in the process who didn't agree with them, obviously they're irrelevant. So that was the diss. Just just go wham. Just complain. I mean, that's what children do. They never can accept a decision. And it, affirmative action was even, the case was even being brought up because Asian Americans felt that they were not getting a fair opportunity. So rich white people didn't have nothing to do with that one either. I just that's always the go-to. That's the favorite thing when you don't have an argument, when you don't have anything to talk about in terms of merit, you just blame it on rich white people. Tyrus's frustration with what he sees as knee-jerk accusations of racism and the dismissal of differing opinions is palpable. He argues that this approach stifles meaningful dialogue and prevents real progress on issues of equity and fairness. Moving from education to politics, Tyrus takes aim at what he perceives as the hypocrisy of political leaders who advocate for progressive policies but fail to live up to their own ideals. He points out the disconnect between rhetoric and reality. Look at the longevity. Look what you get to do when you run this. The world's ending and we have to, it's such a great hustle. And people generally care about the planet. I know when, I, when we were coming up, it Big was stores, Save the Whales, yeah. it was Recycle, mm -hmm. Captain Planet, and we were running around collecting tin cans. Mm -hmm. And we, Americans will do cold that. Then. Yes, yes, but now it is, it's this doomsday thing, and yeah. the only way you can do it is by paying politicians to put the squeeze on Americans, telling us it's hard enough to buy any car right mm -hmm. now. Forget electric. How about a used Chevy truck right now? This critique of political maneuvering extends to what Tyrus sees as the exploitation of genuine concerns for personal gain. He suggests that politicians use environmental issues as a means to exert control and extract money from the public, rather than addressing real problems. Tyrus's frustration with woke culture reaches a boiling point when he discusses environmental activism 
that disrupts public events. He criticizes the methods of climate protesters who interrupted a tennis match. Does this work protest. gluing yourself to the stands? No, it doesn't. And what's what kills me about this is like you're not actually these protests they're claiming they're but they're causing pollution and damage while they're doing it. Like if you if your cause is so strong, come to the table. There's outlets like Fox News that would give you let's have the argument. You know, I belong to Dolphin Project. I belong to things. Yes, I'm conservative, but I'm also an outdoorsman. Right. So there is, but when they have these arguments, the extreme protests, it's about drama. It's about them. In Tyrus's view, these extreme tactics do more harm than good, alienating potential supporters and detracting from meaningful dialogue on environmental issues. He advocates for a more measured approach that focuses on productive discussions rather than disruptive stunts. Perhaps most pointedly, Tyrus addresses the real-world implications of woke policies, particularly the defund the police movement. When a former advocate of police dismantling becomes a victim of crime, Tyrus doesn't hold back. I don't wish this on anyone, but I've been saying for a long time, until the unaffected become affected, then it's a problem. Now she's furious and she's raging her cuts and bruises. But that shouldn't happen to anyone on the streets of America. But welcome to everyday people's Monday and Wednesday. Like this has been going on. You, everyone wants to get rid of the police. And even when there's a time to call and a time to say, we were wrong, these, these ideas are wrong. They only make sense in, in vacuums on first world TV shows. Still, the commitment to the cause is still there because she couldn't resist by saying, we gotta get guns off the streets. It's not the guns right. off the streets. It's the, the young men and women who are committing these crimes at a high level. This incident, in Tyrus's view, exemplifies the disconnect between woke idealism and the harsh realities faced by ordinary citizens. He argues that those who advocate for defunding the police often do so from a position of privilege, only to change their tune when personally affected by crime. Tyrus's critique of woke culture extends to what he sees as a broader pattern of avoiding personal responsibility and blaming external factors for societal issues. He expresses this sentiment succinctly. That's always the go-to. That's the favorite thing. When you don't have an argument, when you don't have anything to talk about in terms of merit, you just blame it on rich white people. And it's been a cushion that's been allowed in this country for a long time. And now as you see more, uh, that's the new pillow. My, my pillow's got nothing on the new pillow of blame rich white people because you can rest your head on it in any argument. As Tyrus continues to unleash his rants about woke America, he challenges viewers to look beyond surface level activism and consider the practical implications of progressive policies. His unfiltered commentary serves as a counterpoint to what he perceives as a culture of oversensitivity and misplaced priorities. In a nation grappling with complex social issues, Tyrus's voice, whether one agrees with it or not, adds a provocative dimension to the ongoing dialogue about America's future. As the debate rages on, one thing remains clear. Tyrus will not be silenced in his crusade against what he sees as the excesses of woke culture.